I invite you to stand as you're able. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the ninth chapter. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. Where everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. This is apparently the gospel of the Lord. Brave of you to say, please be seated. If you were to, uh, to survey the sanctuary today, to take a, a good look at your fellow worshipers around you, you would see a group of, of generally nice and thoughtful people. People who, by and large, are trying to be faithful. People who, by and large, are doing their level best to navigate this experience we call life. What you would also note is that this is a group of people that does not take Jesus very literally, or at least does not take what we just heard Jesus say very literally. Because as you look around, you will see people who have two hands and two feet and two eyes. Yet we just heard Jesus say this, if your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It's better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. For it's better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. For it is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. So we are either a group of people so perfect that Jesus could learn a thing or two from us or we understand that Jesus is exaggerating here. He's using hyperbole. He's saying dramatic, shocking things in order to get our attention and make a point. So first off, thank you all for not reading the Bible literally here, for understanding that it takes nuance and care and attention whenever we encounter the Word of God, that we cannot just state, the Bible says it, I believe it, that settles it. Because Jesus says that if your hand or foot or eye causes you to stumble, cut it off. And none of us are doing that. And thanks be to God. So no, we don't take Jesus literally here. But we definitely take Jesus seriously. Now maybe your ears perked up and you, and you sat up a little straighter with this, with this talk from Jesus of cutting off body parts and, and unquenchable fire and hell. If we hear challenging words from Jesus, it's best to take them 
head on. So let's talk about hell. You know, we, we hear Jesus talk about fire and hell, and, and it's provocative. It's strong language. Hell is a word that, that makes many of us uncomfortable. My kids don't like saying the Apostles' Creed because that word, H-E double hockey sticks, is in it. But here we have Jesus saying hell. And the word that gets translated as hell is, is Gehenna. And Gehenna probably doesn't mean much to any of us. But the people in Jesus' day knew all about Gehenna. You see, Gehenna was a valley to the, to the south and the west of Jerusalem. Gehenna was an actual place. And Gehenna was the city dump. Exactly. It gave people the blues. See what I did there? You should silence your cell phones. Now, while I can just put my garbage out at the end of the driveway and have it whisked away on Tuesday mornings without thinking about it again, the people in Jesus' day knew all about Gehenna, the city dump. It was a, a valley where, where people dumped their trash and their waste, and there was an ever-burning fire there to consume the garbage. Animals like, like wild dogs would scavenge around the edges and fight one another for scraps. Their teeth would gnash, and the losing dogs would cry and weep. Maggots and other creatures of that sort would crawl through this fiery trash furnace, feasting on animal entrails and the like. As Jesus says, their worm never dies. Unquenchable fire and maggots and disease and the weeping and gnashing of teeth. Imagine the heat and the smell and the smoke. It was a dreadful place. And it was a real place. People knew what Jesus was talking about when he was talking about Gehenna. They'd seen it. They'd been there. And it was awful. So, hell seems like a good word to describe it. It's a terrible word that captures how terrible it is when God's intentions and God's beauty are corrupted and broken, when love is violated when life is not honored. Jesus' hearers knew about Gehenna, about hell. They'd seen it, and they'd been there. And so have you and I. Because Jesus isn't talking about eternal punishment and damnation in some other metaphysical realm. Jesus is talking about the here and now. Now, we don't have a burning city dump like Gehenna. But we do have a phrase that at least partially captures what Jesus is saying here. We have dumpster fires. Chaos and calamity and pain and suffering. Now, sure, a dumpster fire may not be quite as viscerally engaging as Gehenna, but it's still an experience of hell. And I'm pretty sure you've had dumpster fire experiences. I know I have. Two Wednesdays ago, my dad went in for an angiogram after other tests had found some, some issues with his heart. My brother called me, which is rarely a good sign. And after he told me, after that, he, he told me that, that dad needed to have triple bypass surgery, which isn't news that anyone wants to hear. 
And then when my wife Karen called her parents to let them know about my dad, she caught them right as they were leaving the oncologist's office. Where my mother-in-law had just learned that her cancer had come back. So it was a dumpster fire of a day. And it's been a dumpster fire of a couple weeks for us. Now, Dad's surgery this week was, was successful. He's back home recuperating. My mother-in-law will have surgery tomorrow, and, and all signs point to her surgery removing the cancer. And we thank you for, for your prayers and, and love and support. My point here is that, that we've all experienced dumpster fires. We've, we've been to Gehenna. And if anyone asks, is hell real? I would confidently say yes, and you've probably been there. You've been burned. It, it, it may have been cancer or cardiac issues, and it's, it's also, it, 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 it's in the story of the survivor, recounting her story. It's in the story of the addict sharing his battles. It's in the betrayal and the broken relationships, in the midst of injustice and war and, and violence, in, in struggles with mental and, and physical health, in the middle of, of family fights, those times when the bills just can't get paid. It's in the, dis, the, the despair and depression and in death itself. And sometimes we, we bring hell upon ourselves and others. And sometimes hell cascades upon us. So that's why Jesus' words warn us not to, to stumble or to cause others to stumble. Because why would we want to bring hell to others or to ourselves? And then Jesus offers something. And what he seems to offer are some seemingly strange words. Because after all that talk about hands and feet and eyes and Gehenna and fire, Jesus says this, For everyone will be salted with fire. What now? Because I don't know about you, but I salt with salt. But salt is both a preservative and a flavor enhancer. It preserves and it enhances. So what I hear Jesus saying here is both that, that, that yes, we will experience fire at times. But he will carry us through, and we can do something good in response. You see, Jesus never abandons us. No chance. No chance in hell, even. Because even if or, or when you find yourself in the middle of a dumpster fire, when you inhale the stench of Gehenna, when hell cascades down upon you, Jesus walks through those fires with you. And Jesus gives us the chance to be salt, to preserve and enhance life. It reminds me of Romans 8, verse 28, when Paul writes, We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to God's purpose. You see, it's not that God causes the bad things to happen. It's that God will always work for good in the midst of whatever happens. Which 
brings to mind for me Brian and Katie. Brian and, and Katie were, were married right here eight days ago. And they have the utterly romantic claim of having their very first date happen on Valentine's Day. Right? How perfect is that? It, it's like the premise of one of those Hallmark movies, right? The first date on Valentine's Day and falling in love and, and all that. So, I mean, that's pretty perfect, right? Well, except that on that first date, Brian's, well, Brian's parents and grandparents were there. Hmm. Brave of Katie to show. And it should also be noted that that first date was at a cancer center where Brian was receiving chemotherapy. You see, this, this beautiful relationship that we celebrated last weekend began right in the middle of a dumpster fire. Right in the middle of Gehenna, in the midst of the hell of malignancy. Now, Katie could have bowed out right away and said that it, it wasn't worth the hassle. It wasn't worth the investment of herself into such a situation, certainly not knowing where things would go. And Brian could have been bitter about the unfairness of it all. But instead, they, they gave themselves over to one another, and they truly gave themselves over to the love and care of Jesus. And thankfully, the chemo worked, and, and Brian has been cancer-free for several years. Which didn't make life perfect for them. Because on Easter of 2015, Katie's family's house burned down. And what this inspired wasn't ongoing anger. But quite remarkably, the desire by both of them to use these terrible experiences to serve others. Brian meets with and offers support to other cancer patients, and, and Katie is continually willing to, to serve others and, and, and use her adversities to help them. Now, these two, they don't look for any credit or acclaim. And in fact, when I asked them if I could share a piece of their story, I was, I was pretty sure that they would say, no thanks. But Brian said this, both Katie and I consider these stories to be our testimonies and know that without Jesus, we could not have come through them with the strength and peace that we were able to. Which is what Jesus' closing words were in the gospel, live at peace with one another. Brian and Katie have been through hell. And Jesus brought them through. They've been salted with fire. And now they preserve and enhance the life around them because of the love of Jesus. So just know that whatever dumpster fire you face, Jesus is right there with you. Whenever you find yourself in Gehenna, the flames will not consume you, but the love of Christ will. And trust that whatever hell you face, You are not alone. This community, this, this church, these sisters and brothers in Christ around you today are salted with fire too. And we will work together for good according to God's purpose. Amen. Amen.